Worried with a $1.5 million mortgage. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your, well, mug of coffee today, guys. I'll get a new Stein, don't worry. I've got to get it in from Austria. But this is a, well, a concerning article that, uh, well, it's the fear. ABC are starting to work the fear of well, people who have borrowed a lot of money. Yesterday, we discussed a 90 basis point rise for fixed mortgages from ANZ. The cash rate has increased and it's predicted to keep going up, particularly if they want to try and, well, attempt to deal with inflation by raising the cash rate. And, well, in that video, we've been discussing the Excel here, you know, different rate rises for $580,000 mortgages, which is the average. You know, and then we'll scare everyone, you know, that's a 300 bucks a month increase. We'll scare everyone with an $800,000 mortgage. Oh, eight million. <laughs> $800,000 mortgage, you're talking 450 a week. But imagine a $1.5 million mortgage, guys, which is not out of the question. And say, okay, you've paid a couple hundred grand off, maybe 1.3, everyone. You're talking 700 and 35 bucks extra a month. But you're paying seven grand a month on your mortgage, guys. That's uh, getting close to eight grand. That's decent money, decent coin. So let's, well, let's have a look at this. Because all of us here who watch the channel, we know this is coming. None of us are surprised. Few of us trust Philip Lowe. I don't know why. I don't know why we do. There's just something in the back of our minds. They feel very reactionary, the Reserve Bank. So let's have a look to see this. Because, well, ABC, they're going to start pulling out these sob stories. Sob story after sob story. Uh, because it gets the views. It gets the attention. It works on the fear, everyone. So while there definitely will be some people in this mess, it's not going to be the majority. That's why... You know, when we're talking about mortgages, the average mortgage is only 50, 580, guys. Not 1.3 or $1.5 million. Uh, look at the difference. There you have to find another 328 bucks a month if you're going from 5.09 to 5.99. So let's look at this. Written by Asib Karem. So, Sarah Ibrahim is worried about what will happen when her fixed rate Ends in January. Okay, so that's that's not too far away. That's 2023. Miss Ibrahim and her partner took out a loan for more than more than 1.5 million in Sydney with a deposit of 10. percent So what? 150 grand deposit. That's what houses used to cost back in the 80s, guys. When the boomers are complaining about we had 18% interest back in my day. Yeah, but you know, you compare how many yearly wages was a house. They're amongst almost 40% of Australians with mortgages who have locked in ultra low fixed rates and will roll off them as soon as next year and potentially face a world of financial pain. Okay, so here's the thing. That 40% of Australians includes people like me who've locked in my mortgage. Now, I'm not going to have a world of pain when I get offered. It's going to be annoying, but I'm preparing for it. And it includes viewers of the channel who proudly locked in their mortgage at various rates. You know, put your hand up if you got sub 2%. A lot of them are going to be prepared and will be okay. I think maybe this is a fringe case and there will be a lot of them. Not the majority. We fixed the majority of our mortgage two, for two years, and we assumed that in the next few years, they wouldn't really go up much, she told ABC News. So, you know what they say about assuming? Makes an ass out of you and me. There you go. So, she trusted the Reserve Bank. She and her husband have been saving for a deposit for years and finally broke into the Sydney property market at the end of 2019. It took us years of going to auctions. It took us years of going to inspections, years of savings, and a lot of bulk shopping and buying secondhand clothes and not buying certain things, 
sacrifices were made, she said. The couple initially had borrowed with a variable rate, but last year shifted to uh, to a part variable rate of 2.75% and a part fixed rate of 2.15% to have certainty of ongoing repayments. Ms. Ibrahim said she relied on repeated statements from the Reserve Bank that interest rates would not go up until 2024. She believed the Reserve Bank. She believed the Reserve Bank. I, I feel sorry for her. But now the RBI has stated that the cash rate will lift to 2.5% and possibly more until it can get inflation down within its target band of 2 to 3%. For Ms. Ibrahim and her family, that means a rise of almost 20000 a year on their mortgage repayments. Yeah, but here's the thing, guys. If she believed that rates wouldn't go up until 2024, that's like, what, two years away? That's nothing. So maybe you shouldn't... I mean, you, you have to borrow this much to get into Sydney. That's the, the bullshit that it is, isn't it? This has been really anxiety inducing to think that interest rates will go up by that much and that we would have to try to weather such a large increase at a time when there are obviously other upwards pressures in relation to the cost of living she said now uh this is uh, am i going to tell them are you going to tell them this is just the beginning of interest rates going up it can go up a lot higher i think my concern is government intervention because our government loves just loves buying votes by coming to the rescue guys like you know letting companies trade while insolvent the stupidest bloody thing they proposed you know job keeper for everyone then juicing the housing market don't worry i'm sure the government will come and offer them to buy 40 percent of your house to get you out of trouble it's really stressful thinking about that and thinking about how we're going to manage such a loan but that's what you need to prepare for when you, when you, you know, people will ask me, uh, you know, if they should get a loan or what they should do. And I simply say, uh, you're asking an architect financial advice. That's terrible. You're asking someone on YouTube. That's nuts. But what I do suggest is do a worst case scenario. If you're a couple, put it in Excel, check what happens if one of you gets fired or if you both lose your job. You have enough reserves in check. What happens when interest rates go up? Scenario it. Check it out. That's going to be a test of a marriage when it goes to shits and you have to say, okay, honey, you can't spend any money for the next two months at all on anything, not just buying in bulk or making sacrifices, making real sacrifices. (laughs) You know, selling the TV. For many Australian oh, t- people don't nowadays, I think the equivalent of selling the TV would be selling the iPhone, wouldn't it? For many Australians, that stress has already started, with financial counsellors reporting an uptick in banks trying to repossess people's homes because they've been missing mortgage repayments. And well, remember when the banks promised to not foreclose on anyone back in COVID times? So we'll have to see if that's gone out the window now and ha- uh, how many of these people have been... Uh, or how long they've been skirting the edge. Economists fear that coupled with higher cost of living and a possible unemployment down the track, the financial system could be at risk. Some banks are hitting borrowers with eviction notices. Since moratoriums on mortgage repayments, which were introduced during the pandemic to account for the fact people had lost or been stood down from their jobs and were not generating enough income, have been lifted, More restraints have been falling behind on their repayments. Stephanie Tonkin, Director of Mortgage Stress at West Justice, says in the past two months alone, the organisation has seen 60 clients. About half of them have been hit with eviction notices. She says they are now trying to negotiate with their lenders for those clients to not lose their homes. We're seeing clients come up to us with a whole range of of legal, emotional and financial issues, and we're, we're calling on the banks to take a compassionate approach to this real tsunami of homeowners who are finding themselves at real risk of homelessness, she said. We've already seen banks ramping up their action to enforce mortgage debts and repossess, repossess homes 
already against the background of relatively low interest rates. Yeah, I mean, the cash rate interest rates are still low, guys. They are still low compared to what we had in the past. But there's a generation, my generation, the millennials, we probably still remember the last recession. I remember the recession Australia had to have. I was a kid because my father was stressed, and you can pick up on that as a child, because uh, construction work was getting dead quiet. We were, he was a builder down in Victoria, and it just all dried up real quick, real quick. You know? Miss Tonkin, and how many have not even got that memory? Miss Tonkin notes that many of her clients are still getting back on their feet post COVID. She wants banks to use evictions as a last resort and be understanding of some of the underlying emotional drivers of mortgage stress, be it family violence, gambling, mental ill health. The latest data from the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority, APRA, shows that of $2.2 trillion worth of loans held in March 2022, about $9 billion belong to borrowers who are 30 to 89 days overdue on their repayments. So that's, that's a tiny fraction, guys. What are we looking at here? Hang on. 2.2. Oh, wait. I'm trying to type it in Excel to get that as a percentage. Wait a minute. Did I get that right? Nope. Hang on. Uh, nope. A few more zeros. Wait. Uh, two. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Billion, trillion. 2.2 trillion. What do we have? 14, 9 billion. Am I doing that right? Okay. 9 billion. So f- let's figure out the percentage of this to this. Come on. Oh, look, look at these mad Excel skills here, guys. So there you go. Less than half a percentage point. So not as many as people think, guys. Okay. So, this is uh, slightly up over the quarter from $8.4 billion in December 2021, but well down from $14 billion in 2019. So, let's say, well, we'll change this to 14 and we'll see the difference if it's the same total, which it won't be, but, you know, there we go. So, we're, we're still talking less than 1%, everyone, of the mortgages. So, don't, don't be sitting there with your, your sacks of silver and bit well, not Bitcoin anymore, hoping to, to jump in. When you know the percentage is still very low, APRA also provides data on non performing loans, those that are more than 90 days overdue or where the bank thinks they'll take a loss on the loan. As of March, that was 10.5 billion in non performing loans held by owner occupiers, up from 9.6 billion in March 2019. And mortgages in possession, people whose homes are repossessed by the banks that have defaulted on their loans, were valued at around $308 million, down from $705 million. So we're going from trillions to billions to millions, everyone. So still a very small percentage, okay, tiny. And they're comparing it just to COVID times. How different is this to the median or the average over a longer period of time? Are we above or below trend? That's something I will add to my list of things to look at when I have free time, one day in the future. ABC News also contacted all big four banks, Commonwealth, ANZ, Westpac, and the National Australia Bank. CBA reported that current home loan arrears are at record low levels of less than 1%, and one in two borrowers were three months ahead of their repayments. This is, well, yeah, this is what we have to realize, guys. People have buffers. They've got liquidity buffers. So hopefully, hopefully, most people, at least the viewers of the channel, are going to, if, you've got, if you're concerned enough, you're going to have uh, your mortgage locked in at a low rate. I, I saw one viewer was talking about how they've got, you know, emergency fund. They've got 20 grand, which is six months of their savings set aside. They've got, you know, mortgage locked in at a low rate. Uh, so they're confident they can sort it out. You don't need, like, your entire mortgage in cash and an offset account to weather a difficult time. You just need enough money to get you through so you know losing your job doesn't turn into a complete disaster. You know, that that's what you want. That's what these emergency funds are for. 
maybe these difficult times that we're going to start facing, we'll uh, turn those into part of the lexicon. Westpac said more than two-thirds of customers were ahead of their mortgage repayments and 90-day delinquencies were less than 1%. NAB said that 70% of its customers were ahead on their mortgage payments but did not indicate default rates. People may have borrowed to the hilt and mortgage defaults could rise. Well, these these are the people, uh, I think, um, what was it, Martin and John were talking about it in the latest video. I think John mentioned that they're willing to sacrifice a certain number of, of people and who will go under, who will be to the edge, who will lose their homes. And sadly, I think he's right. We've seen the way our government is willing, both sides, both sides to just chase votes. And sadly, a lot of the voters are stupid, so they're, they're chasing rubbish, and uh, we're all going to pay for it in the long run. Anyway, financial counselors are worried that more people coming off fixed rates and variable rates head, uh, heading above 5% will default on their home loans. Financial Counseling Australia Chief Executive Fiona uh, Guthrie said a lot of people have borrowed to the hilt and she is shocked banks have been letting people borrow six or more times their income with very low deposits. The number of people who face mortgage stress is still high, but since the regulator, a regulator introduced tighter lending standards late last year, people borrowing six or more times their income with low deposits is starting to fall. I mean, is, this is just the new normal now, guys. You've got to have both people working and you've got to well, borrow a big chunk of money. APRA March 2022 quarter data shows about 23.1% of new mortgages, 32.7 billion worth, have a debt to income ratio of six times or more in dollar terms. This was down from the record high of 24.3% or 40 billion in the previous quarter, but still almost tripled the rate from March 2019 when it was 11.4 billion. We can't, we shouldn't really be comparing to March and COVID period because that, that, that's a, well, an anomaly in the data, honestly. We need to look at the long term numbers here. We need to look at much further back to, to see the trend. We need to see the trend. Now, I know it's, it's shocking if you're borrowing so much more of your income, but. You know, people are going to have to, like our friend at the beginning of the article who thought, you know, buying secondhand clothes and buying bulk is a sacrifice. They're going to learn what sacrifices really are if they want to keep their home. And people are tougher than they realize. Or maybe I've just been watching too much Jordan Peterson. In terms of new home loans written in March 2022, about $10.5 billion worth had loan to value ratios of 90% or above, meaning a deposit of 10% or less was put down. This is slightly down from December 2021. Ms. Guthrie said they are already seeing signs of people in financial stress, and that is set to worse under higher interest rates. We've got the cost of petrol going up, the cost of food going up, the cost of electricity rising. So all of these factors are playing into what could be quite serious financial problems for a group of people in our community. People are going to have to tighten their belts, and sometimes quite substantially, and we are particularly worried that for some people it may be enough to tip them over the hedge so they can't pay their mortgage. Well, yeah, that's always going to happen. You know, we're entering into tough economic times, guys. People are going to lose their homes. Some people should have lost their homes during the lockdowns, during all the interventions that the government did. For every percentage point increase in interest rates, that will mean more and more people will experience financial stress. And the larger that group of people, the bigger that reverberates through the whole economy. Yes, that's true. But sometimes, well, going through a stressful situation is the best thing you can do. These people may learn that how they've been living their life is just not sustainable or they've been living out of their financial means. But we don't want to hear that, do we? That, that, that's, that's too sensible. Some people will also be stretched because they're already making interest-only repayments rather than a uh, principal of the home loan. These interest-only loans are now a small portion of the $2.2 trillion home loan market, valued at $225 billion, which is down from 405 in March. That was before APRA introduced title lending standards. I wonder how many people will go to interest-only for a period if they're in trouble. 
The big positive for most borrowers is they saved money during the pandemic lockdowns, with balances and offset counts lifting from $162 billion to $228 billion in March this year. Rate City Research Director Sally Tyndall said this total could drop in coming quarters as RBA continues to hike official rates and people start to dip into their savings to keep up with their growing monthly repayments. I thought it already was dipping down. Or maybe the rate of savings is going down. She said most Australian households were well-placed to take these rate hikes on the chin. and There will not be people just defaulting on their mortgages en masse. However, there will be some people that cannot chart a path through the rising cost of living and the rising cost of mortgage repayments at the same time, she said. Losing a home has an everlasting impact on that person's finances. Well, I wonder if some of the people who lose their homes with petrol going up, with energy going up, I wonder if that will affect their voting decisions. They realise, you know, they're advocating for all this renewable energy that just isn't efficient or isn't providing baseload, all these increased costs, all these these re- extra requirements from the construction of houses. Yeah, I doubt it. The Reserve Bank reckoning. Was it wise to suggest no rate rise until 2024? I mean, the Reserve Bank is very reactionary. They feel completely reactionary when you read anything they're saying. This week, Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe noted that when the bank uh, signaled interest rates would have would not rise until 2024, it did so under pandemic circumstances, imagining the worst-case scenario. Well, remember when, what, 2019 or 2020, you'll find the videos on the channel about housing falling 40%, predicted to crash 40%. That was the media jumping onto worst-case scenarios from the Reserve Bank. Remember the Reserve Bank wanting to shut down the real estate market? Remember that? This is just nuts that we've handed so much power of our economy over to the Reserve Bank, over to the RBA. And they've got no competition. We only have one Reserve Bank. We can't go stuff you. I'm going to trade in this other currency. Mr. Lowe said now, with the cost of living in Australia running towards 7%, interest rates will keep rising until inflation falls back within the central bank's target mandate of 2 to 3%. So there you go. They're going to keep hurting you until they get their rates back to there. You know. So let's say if <laughs> how high? What if it, what if the cash rate hits seven percent? They need to get above inflation. What's going to happen there to people who are struggling now, guys? Uh, Ms. Gertrude said the Reserve Bank had a, to take greater care in its messaging. There would certainly have been people who would have listened to those predictions of no rate rise until 2024 and made decisions based on them. And there will be some degree of reckoning for the RBA, she said. Well, I listened to those predictions and I made decisions based on them. I locked in my mortgage quick smart because I didn't trust anything they were saying. Let me know in the comments if I'm not alone. Should we just do the opposite of what the Reserve Bank says? Really, should we just... I think it's fair to say that when the Reserve Bank makes quite definitive statements about where interest rates are going to do, and when uh, that doesn't happen, they've got a degree of responsibility for that. They need to learn from what looks like quite a serious mistake, that people have quite serious implications for a number of people. So are they licensed to give financial advice? Just, Just asking. Just asking. Steve Hamilton Assistant Professor of Economics at the George Washington University and visiting fellow at the Crawford School at the ANU, said now rates will rise far higher than anyone had anticipated and more and more people will get closer to the edge and get pushed over. The risks are that they they go too hard too fast. Well, if you can do something properly or you can stuff it up, which way do you think our Reserve Bank is going to go? Just, just which way do you think? And that leads to an increase in defaults and a really de- aggressive downturn in the housing market. And I think that uh, that does threaten financial system to some degree. Well, you know what? You get a downturn. Um, and then what are they going to do, guys? <laughs> they'll, they'll tank the rate, cash rate again. And then we'll have Mortgage Keeper. That's what I'm really worried about, all of this stuff. That we'll, uh, we'll wind up with Mortgage Keeper. Uh, it's meant to be a joke. But... 
That's Australia now. We're a bunch of you know, oh, interventionists. Ms. Ibrahim said both regulators like the RBA and APRA, as well as lenders, have an obligation to Australians to ensure they do not get false hopes and interest rates will stay low and get over indebted. No, 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 bad, bad. Wrong, wrong bloody message to end this article on. As an adult, you need to plan for the worst case scenario that interest rates are going to rise. People have been talking about rates going up for years. Okay? All through social media, people have been warning about rates going up, how it's unsustainable. Not, let's blame, I mean, it's ABC. Or is there more to this article? There's more. That's okay. Is it just because it's ABC? So everyone goes, oh, the authority should have done a better job. It's never about individual responsibility. Of course not. What, what am I thinking? What am I thinking here? You know, wrong, wrong country for that, Florian. I definitely took the message from the RBA that you can start making plans knowing the interest rates are going to remain stable and low. This is not just home loan plans. I mean, I mean business plans based on that. So it's a real big deal, she said. Well, this is because she probably hasn't looked at the historical precedent of the RBA's ability to forecast and make predictions. They're shithouse at it. Okay. Complete shit ass. They're just reactionary to the rest of the world. We're just a colony on the edge of the world. People need to understand that we're not important. Okay? Australia is not important. We dig holes. We sell overinflated housing because we've got a nice stable economy and stable government and we got nice weather. We teach foreigners how to speak English out of universities. They come over here. They love it. They want to settle and have a good life here. You can't blame anyone for that. That's Australia. Okay? That's Australia. We're not world leaders in renewable technology. I don't know how the hell bloody Albo thinks that's going to happen. We dig shit up out of the ground. We send it overseas. Okay? You can't even afford to to add value to it here in this country because our not in our backyard lot, the greenie lot, everyone is a pain in the ass in this country making it so expensive and difficult to do anything here. So, yeah, that's Australia. Anyway, let's keep going. I also appreciate there's a lot of different variables that the RBA have to consider, but I definitely feel that one of them needs to be highly geared mortgages and people in situations. No, they don't give a shit about housing. Housing, do I have that here? Let me see. I probably don't have it anymore. Housing is not part of the RBA mandate, everyone. I haven't got that on here. I've got that in the PowerPoint. Um, Yeah, it's not part of the RBA mandate. They don't give a shit about housing. They're worried about wages and keep and inflation. But it's, and it's funny, you know, again and again and again, the Reserve Bank, Philip Lowe, is calling for wages to increase, but now he's warning that it's getting too high. Don't ask for too much. See, this, they're just completely reactionary. Can we trust them for anything? Would it be better if we just got rid of them? Ms. Ibrahim said, while, they're, they're a middle class, uh, while they are middle-class working professionals... She is a lawyer and her husband works in consulting. The couple have two daughters, Amalia 5 and Sophia 9, and they already had to cut back on essentials to account for the rising costs of living. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Remember when we were looking at the articles of the two professionals who were so thankful for the mortgage, what, mortgage loans? Mortgage holidays. Remember that? They were so thankful for the mortgage holidays. They were earning over six figures, both of them. We're already thinking about uh, what we buy at the grocery shops. How long do we keep the heater on, she said. Okay, so they're starting to learn face reality. I mean, Rachel made an Excel file, and we walked around Aldi and Costco and compared the per unit rates of different things. She got our grocery bill so cheap, and then we decided to look at carnivore, and our grocery bill skyrocketed to the moon. But still, she got it really cheap. So they're, they're just in the beginning stages of actually starting to, to, to tighten the belt. Okay, that, that's what they are. But now we're thinking, what other costs do we have? One of our children is in early childcare, and that's quite expensive. So now we're thinking, well, what does that mean for their future? This is going to be a lot more stressful. Early, I mean, you don't need childcare. You can, if you're a lawyer, work from home. Find a way to work from home. Okay, adapt. Make it work. Or bring the kid to work. Bring the kid to work. That's what we did. We brought our kids to work. You can do that. Why not? It's the future. 
you adapt, deal with it. There's a lot of middle-class Australians that have real big mortgages. If rate hikes are done really fast, they could see a lot of people go through mortgage hardship. I don't know. I think there are a lot of people that are uh, that are a bunch of tightwads. Ms. Ibrahim said they will do everything they can to hold onto their home. But with such a high loan-to-value ratio, given their low deposit of about 10%, having to sell is a thought that crossed their minds. It feels like a huge weight was lifted off our shoulders when we finally got into the Sydney property market. Now it's about how you stay in the market, she said. So, there we go. Let's, uh, let's have a talk about this one, guys. $1.5 million on a 10% deposit for two professionals with two kids. That's just the way Sydney is, guys. Honestly. They should move to Brisbane. They should have moved to Brisbane. You get more value for your money there or keep renting in Sydney. I mean, what's really going to happen is tightening the belt. Okay, really tightening the belt, looking at all the rubbish you spend money on, really going through it, through it. selling all the doodads and knickknacks that you don't need, getting rid of all of the subscriptions that you don't need, changing your diet, cutting out meals, skipping food. You, know, you only need to eat once a day. I, I know ABC will... Well, I'm just waiting to see the articles. The interest rates, we haven't seen it here. Interest rates are so high, I've had to skip a meal. You know, whoop-de-doo. Come on. I mean, okay, I mean, I feel sorry for people in this situation. I can make light of it because I've been through similar situations where we've had to go through some tough financial times, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. You become stronger for it. It looks like in this circumstance, they haven't really had to tighten the belt, really tighten it. You go through that, you get a bit of a different perspective. Hey, it may even change, uh, change your political opinion on a few things. That could be good. Anyway... What are, your, what, are, what are your suggestions, guys? How would you, people who are facing mortgage stress, let's leave on a positive note, what would you suggest people do to save money? Now, I've done videos on this in the past, five ways to save money. It's, uh, I would simply suggest being super bloody cheap and really getting to the zone, getting rid of everything you can and then throwing every extra penny you have at your mortgage to reduce your interest. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can financially support us by joining us on YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband, or purchasing our pocket squares. And finally, if you need an architect, at least in Queensland, give us a call. We've got a lot of education, mining, and resource sector work. Take care, guys. Have a great day. And this is just going to be one of many of these articles that we see. I was talking to a viewer. He reckons they keep these all in bulk and just contact these people when they need them. What do you reckon?